Well, thank you. Um, it almost feels like I'm a, a straight person uh, who always pretended he was straight, but he's now entered to this gay bar, and he's going to say he's gay as well. <laughs> um, because I, <laughs> I always was quite negative on Bitcoin uh, in my tweets <laughs> for years, actually. A and recently, I, I, I said that I will put 5% of my net worth whatever that may be, <laughs> in Bitcoin. Um, and people were shocked because they said, what happened to you, Willem? <laughs> and this is my third um, presentation within four or three or four weeks uh, for a Bitcoin community. So it, it is really feeling like my coming out. Um, <laughs> but I, I put my money where my mouth is. But so I've been uh, spending, um, I've, I've been buying Bitcoin in the last few months um, because I, I love boom and bust cycles, and I, I, I really love the current, uh, well, <laughs> disaster in the crypto world because it makes it easy for me to buy cheap. And uh, actually, I bought f um, some more Bitcoin in the last 24 hours. I just sold a piece of real estate. Um, actually, it was a church. Um, I could buy for half a million uh, two years ago. I sold it for one million. So it, uh, yeah, that, that, that's another bubble, um, and I, I, I'm just starting to invest. But I, I need you. I need the wisdom of crowds because I'm looking for the button in uh, Bitcoin because I don't like all the old coins, the shit coins. You know, people always tell me, "Please, Willem, come to our com Bitcoin community because there you can trust people." Well, I've never seen so many liars and cheats and and, and convicts running around, you know, in the world of crypto. So. Uh, don't start to talk about trust um, because you're being fools. You're being ripped off. You're being stolen. <laughs> well, but wh wh where's the button for um, crypto? I want to see hands. Um, first, uh, all the people who think we have reached the bottom already, please can you show your hands? That's, that's like 10, 20 percent. Um, who thinks we will reach a bottom near the 3,000 level? That's almost as many. Yeah, that's why I wait to, to buy more. Um, but I think in the, the next year, the next 12 months, will, um, will give us a, a wonderful opportunity to, to add to your uh, crypto holdings, especially to the Bitcoin holdings. Well, I still see um, uh, signs like this on the internet. Um, who in this audience thinks that Ripple, or not a cryptocurrency, can replace the dollar as a world reserve currency? Oh, smart people. Oh, <laughs> smart people, smart people. Because I, I'm a student of monetary history. Um, I've been studying banks, central banks. Um, and hard money for quite some time. And um, I think it's stupid to think that uh, central bankers will allow you guys <laughs> or our community to um, take over the financial world. Um, of course, we've seen a strong decline in the purchasing power of the, uh, of the dollar, not only uh, related to, uh, to, to Bitcoin, but also to uh, other um, assets like gold or silver or whatever. Um, I was also the stupid guy who tweeted in May 2016 that it would be <laughs> a good idea to put 5 or 10 percent of your money in Bitcoin and Ethereum. And actually I downloaded an uh, Ethereum wallet for three days <laughs> in May 2016. Ethereum was valued at six dollars uh, at that time. And I wanted to put uh, 10,000 uh, euro in Ethereum. But it took such a long time, you know, to download the wallet. And I'm not too technical, so <laughs> I forgot about it. <laughs> and then I would, <laughs> when I looked again, it was like $600 Ethereum. And so next time I, I will follow my own advice um, and, and, and make some money. Um, what, 
what I found so interesting on the current situation, and that's also the reason I changed my mind, is that um, for the first time in about 300 years, we see that crypto is developing into a totally new asset class. And I'm, um, I'm a fund manager, I have my own investment fund, so I'm in the side of the institutional money. And what I see now is that the institutional um, money is looking at crypto um, like they see the start of a totally new asset class. And what kind of asset class do we have? We have real estate, has been around for a few, a few thousand years. We have the bonds, bond markets, that this has been around for like uh, 300 years. Then we have the equity markets, the stock exchange, has been around for 400 years. The Dutch VOC was the first listed company in the world. And of course we have the precious metals and the, the real assets. But now crypto is starting to become a new asset class accepted by regulators, accepted by central banks. And th this is what makes this point in time so, so very interesting for an investor. Because if crypto is accepted as a new asset class, and actually we've seen this happening in Switzerland and in Malta and several other countries, um, part of the total world assets, and total world assets is now 300,000 billion, <laughs> is mind boggling, part of the 300,000 billion will start to flow towards the crypto um, market. And I think that, that, that's um, what attracts me um, to the world of crypto. Um, what's interesting to see is that you have all these large institutions like the Deutsche Bank and, 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 all, and all the other bankers who, you know, bankers, they hate competition. They really hate competition. At first, they thought, well, the crypto world would be a very, very small niche, and we, we, we can break it when, when it becomes too, um, too popular. Because central banks, they're in control of this international monetary system, and they always can change the laws. But um, I really expected in the last uh, 12 months that the G20, so the organization of the 12 largest economies, would really start to... Uh, um, to attack the world of crypto, but um, something different has, ha has occurred. Uh, we now see calls for regulation of the world of crypto. So they no, they no longer uh, are fighting the world of crypto. Well, in China they still do. Um, but I think that's, that's, that's an important change. Um, well, I, I started to look into um, the world of money um, some 20 years ago, I was a real estate investor in, in Amsterdam. Um, I was buying apartments, a buy-to-let market, um, and they were financed by ING Bank uh, by 120%, so I could finance everything. I bought the apartments and uh, all rented them out. And then I started to study the financial system. I uh, published my first book in 2007. Um, I was quite sure that uh, a collapse of the financial system would happen within 10 years. Actually, this, this quote was on the back cover of the book. And I was much too positive because it all occurred within 12 months. And after the uh, collapse of uh, the Lehman Brothers, I stopped as working as a journalist. And I started two companies. One was Amsterdam Gold, where you could buy uh, physical gold and silver. The company still exists. It was a web shop. We started in late 2008. Three years later, we had a turnover of 100 million. And we still have our own vaults uh, at Schiphol Airport. And now you see the, the proof why I don't need uh, Bitcoin. Because I always thought I have enough of the physical stuff. <laughs> so why? <laughs> um, I always call Bitcoin digital, digital gold or digital money. And it has one big advantage over the real physical stuff. Because you, if you want to flee the country, like uh, when you're a corrupt official in China, you better have Bitcoin than gold, because you can't run <laughs> and take your gold when you cross the border. But since I wasn't planning to, uh, 
to flee out of uh, the Netherlands. I always thought uh, the gold and silver is, is enough. This is not all mine. <laughs> um, we, we built a vault um, in, in, in at Schiphol Airport. And it's a, it's a wonderful way to store your uh, um, gold and silver. I'm not connected with the company anymore. Um, but if you're lo looking into diversification of your gains, still any gains left? Yes, there are. Um, and especially it's my tip of today, uh, <laughs> buy silver, buy silver bars. You know, silver is very, very cheap and we'll have physical shortages in silver. So I was um, always buying the physical stuff and not too interested in, uh, in these kind of um, assets. But that has changed and I'm always wondering, why do you guys present Bitcoin like a gold coin? It's stupid, you know. <laughs> when you want to own gold coin, you buy gold coins. <laughs> and don't pretend like Bitcoin is a gold coin. Um, I'm also an investor in uh, hard assets. Um, I had some luck um, when I was an early investor in Aurelian Resources. They were responsible for the largest gold find in Ecuador uh, 10 years ago. I bought 10,000 shares for 30 cents. And they uh, went to $43 within a year. And that's why I started the Commodity Discovery Fund. That's the fund I run, where we invest in, uh, in hard assets. I was always intrigued by this graph. Actually, this graph uh, was the reason I started to invest in uh, precious metals around 2000. Because if you see the Go Dow Jones gold ratio, it always goes back to, let's say, 1 to 1 or 1 to 4. And the current ratio is 1 to 45 or whatever. So, um, skip that. I had a wonderful timing. We started the fund, the commodity fund, at the top of the commodity markets. And now we had 10 years, uh, <laughs> a downtrend of 10 years. Um, but wha what's more interesting is to discuss the uh, international monetary system. Um, like I said, we have a system in which we have total financial assets of 300,000 billion. Uh, most of it is uh, based on debt, almost all is based on debt. And when the crisis occurred, um, the house of cards came tumbling down. And the only thing we've, uh, or the central bankers have done in the last 10 years, is to add a few layers of, uh, well, to this house of cards. And I think the great um, attraction of crypto, of course, is that uh, the debasement of the currency, which, what we have been witnessing, especially in the last 100 years, especially since the start of the Federal Reserve, um, makes, makes um, cryptocurrencies, and especially Bitcoin, of course, very, uh, very interesting. Um, if we look at the decline of fiat currencies uh, in terms of gold over the last 100 years, it, 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 it's... it's um, it's amazing people still have fiat money <laughs> and they don't uh, spend it all on uh, gold or, 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 or crypto. And here you see a breakdown of all world financial assets. That's 300 trillion, that was numbers from 2014, so that's 300,000 billion of all financial assets. And when crypto becomes a new asset class, like we see the first stage now, Imagine what will happen when two or three percent of all financial assets will start to move towards cryptocurrencies. And um, I, I meet many people from the um, financial institutions and they're all looking into the world of crypto now. Here, is, um, here you see a breakdown on the average sovereign debt per capita per, um, for the uh, different countries. Um, try to find China. I will help you on the right top of the graph. It's only $7,000 per capita. And look at the rich countries. Japan, US, UK, France. So our financial system is a big mess. And that's why um, we see all these um, big changes and people fleeing towards hard assets and crypto assets and also real estate. Um, the dollar has been the, the anchor for the worldwide financial system 
for the last uh, 60, 70 years. The system changed in 1944 with the Bretton Woods Conference. Um, before the dollar, uh, we had the British pound, which was the world reserve currency. And like you see, you, like you can um, read from this graph, world reserve currencies always fail after 50, 60, or 70 years. And now we're in the final stages um, for the dollar as the anchor for the world's um, monetary system. And um, maybe you've seen this cover before. It's a cover from The Economist in 1988 predicting a new cur world's currency would arrive in 2018. Well, actually, that's, that's, uh, that's now. So in my... Um, books. I've, I've been writing some books on the world's monetary system. Um, the most important one is The Big Reset. Any people who have read The Big Reset? Quite a bit. Should have brought some books here. <laughs> um, it was translated into uh, quite a number of uh, countries and languages and I, I'm very um, um, I'm very proud it was translated into Chinese and especially because it was published by the China Renmin University Press. Any people in the room who know Renmin University in Beijing, it's called the finishing school for Chinese bankers. So Chinese bankers are being educated at Renmin University. So when their publishing house decides to publish a book like this, it's not because they like me as a guy, but because they think that the thesis in this book is uh, worthwhile to share with their um, future bankers. And this book is highly critical of the, on, the, on the Western monetary system with the dollar as anchor. And it's talking about uh, the war on gold and the financial endgame. Um, and in the book, uh, I present a thesis that the world's financial system is not a binary system. Most people make, make the mistake, I, I've been doing that also 10 years ago, to think that the system works or the system fails. But this is not a binary system. This system can be changed, and we can have monetary resets. We've have seen, we have seen monetary resets in the past. 1944, Bretton Woods was a monetary reset. And we, we will see resets in the future. Um, but it's quite sure that the US will lose its power, uh, or the dollar will lose its role as, the sole, uh, as being the sole anchor for world's financial system in the next 10 to 20 years. That doesn't mean that the dollar will become worthless. The British pound was the anchor for world's financial system 100 years ago. It's still around, but it lost its position as being the anchor for the new financial system. And China is very open, and that's what I explain in the book, and that's why they like the book so much, that China wants a new anchor for world's financial system being the IMF money. Um, the IMF um, was afraid for a dollar crisis in the late 1960s, and they made this currency basket, which is called the Special Drawn Ride, the SDR. And this currency basket is a, is a form of IMF money, and they want to upgrade the SDR into a world reserve currency. And that, that's where it gets very interesting, because China the, the Chinese renminbi has just been added to the, this currency basket of the IMF. The dollar is in this basket, the euro, the yen, the pound, and now the renminbi as well. And if you listen to um, bankers when they're being honest, and you really have to search for that, they, 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 they all know, that's why I love uh, central bankers who are uh, retired because then suddenly they, they see the light. You know, we had our own now dwelling <laughs> predicting a new crisis. <laughs> uh, in 2008, he said nobody could have seen this one coming. Um, but they're quite open about this being the end game for, um, for the current f uh, s um, financial system. We've seen um, an explosion of the uh, central bank balance sheets. Worst is uh, the Swiss National Bank. They even uh, they printed so much money to keep the value of the Swiss franc down that they even bought a lot of stocks. You know, on the stock exchange, they they have over one billion of Apple shares on the balance sheet of the Swiss National Bank. 
is a great business model, you know, you create money out of thin air <laughs> and then you start to buy all kind of uh, <laughs> shares on the world market. Um, I told you this. Um, this is a great admission also from the large bank of China that a new global currency setup is being uh, conceived. It was already 2014, so behind, behind the screen, you know, central banks are, have been working for years to really prepare a monetary reset which, uh, which could happen uh, within the next well, five, five to ten years, and maybe even sooner. And, and what's very interesting, because all these people who think that Bitcoin or Ripple will take over uh, the financial world, central banks have been studying their own digital currencies. And in recent weeks, I've, I've done some research uh, on, on, on the topic. And I found this uh, publication, you can find it online, March 2018, official publication um, from the BIS. Uh, the Bank for Inter International Settlements in Basel. This is the mother of all central banks, uh, you could call the best. And it's openly discussing um, central bank digital currencies. And also the IMF has published a report in March this year. This was just in preparation of the uh, important IMF spring meeting, which is always held in April in, um, in Washington. So there was even a podcast, I found a podcast on the IMF website um, where a broader role for the SDR um, was promoted and um, they even said that the SDR could be of use to support the financial system. And like I said, the SDR um, has, um, it's, it's a mix of five world currencies now, US dollar for 40%. So when we start, and the, the euro for 30%, over 30%, British pound, Japanese yen, and the Chinese uh, renminbi for 11%. So when we would choose to use the SDR as the anchor for world's financial system, the dollar would still be in control because the dollar is the main part of the SDR. And that's why this is an acceptable solution, both for the US and China. So it won't be a collapse of the dollar. And um, where it gets interesting is um, if you read the papers on the SDR, that they talk about how the SDR can, well, provide liquidity for global financial system, which means they, they, they will create trillions of SDR out of thin air during the next crisis and they will, will give it to governments, they will give it to companies and they might even give it to all of us through a SDR wallet and that's why they are studying the digital currencies and if you read um, especially the next page they point to uh, further work is needed, how financial technologies could impact the IMS, international monetary system and currency uses and they I have I found another file. Uh, there was a speech by Mark Carney. Mark Carney is the governor of the British Central Bank, and he even said that we could um, create um, e-wallets with SDR and well distribute it around the world. And I, I wanted to share this with you to show that the uh, the world um, of central bankers, they're they're they're. Uh, working very hard to to um, to start um, with their own digital currencies, and I think the world of Bitcoin will be uh, will be regulated. This was a um, um, this was a um, an article in the Financial Times last year when everybody was still expecting a clampdown on Bitcoin. But this never occurred, and I, I'm quite sure that they, they will stick to regulation now and work on their own digital currencies to use that, especially during the next crisis. So this is one of the, this is of February this year. And now Treasury officials, they call for, not for a, a crackdown, but they call for global crypto regulation. So that's a big shift. And, and this shift was the reason for me to really 
uh, look very serious into the world of uh, crypto and and that's why I want to add uh, quite a bit of Bitcoin to my uh, to my holdings and if you Google the subject, you will even find the first papers talking about uh, maybe the start of a Fed coin, so a digital currency uh, built by the Federal Reserve. So it's something to watch. And uh, in this New York Times story of May this year, um, the Fed coin is openly discussed. And um, well, I think that's that's something to watch, and I'm 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 very curious what what you all think about this and what your questions uh, will be. Thank you. Thanks, uh, thanks, Willem. This is a thought-provoking uh, mission, let's say, moving you to Bitcoin, but also seeing the development in a lot of central banks in moving to the central bank uh, back to back to crypto. Um, there's some question, room for question. I see here three fingers here. Let's start with uh, this for your, your comment. Thank you. Um, I think about two or three sessions of Bitcoin Wednesday ago, there was an economist from the UN UNESCO University, and there was also discussed the debate whether central banks could start digital currencies. You know about the kind of discussion about that? I, because my question is, he was quite clear that uh, when digital currencies are brought out by central banking, there are a couple of few basic elements of uh, renting uh, are disrupted. What is your thought on that? Um, you know, I don't go into the technical details of Bitcoin or crypto or the central bank digital currencies. What strikes me, and th they are planning this. <laughs> and I, I'm a student of monetary history and I'm also a student of central bankers. And I see, all, I see people in the back stretching their head, maybe this is more easy. Um, so I've been studying central bankers long enough to wait uh, to know how they plan big changes in, in, in world's financial system. And we have so many, um, we have so much proof now that they know the current, do the current dollar centered financial system <coughs> is doomed. They all know it. <laughs> they talk openly, almost openly about it. And when you read the, the big reset, um, my book, um, there's so many examples, especially f coming from China, uh, pointing to the pressure the East is putting on the West to change the financial system. And I always make this joke that all countries east of Germany buy gold. <laughs> and all countries west of Germany, they all sell gold because gold is the anti-dollar. Gold used to support the dollar because during Bretton Woods, we agreed that the dollar could be the anchor for world's financial system as long as the dollar was as good as gold and countries could change the dollar into gold. US promised dollars could always be t changed into gold, but they, um, well, they failed on it in 1971 when Nixon closed the gold window. He closed the connection between the dollar and gold because countries like Holland were asking for gold and that's why we in Holland um, um, received so much gold from, 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 from the US. So we know big changes are coming to Wales financial system. We know digital currencies are being planned to be part of it. And for us as crypto investors, the most important thing to understand is that um, crypto bitcoins will be tolerated as a niche within the financial system. Um, and crypto could turn into a separate asset class, but, but don't make the mistake that you think <laughs> Bitcoin or Ripple will take over the financial world, because that will only happen when we see a full collapse of all central banks and all banks, and, um, and, and that, that, that won't happen, because this financial system, as, as, as I explained, is a binary system, is not a system uh, built by God or nature. nature. We, we, can, we can change it in the way we want. So we, we, have, we have time for two more questions. I'm, I'm briefed, so that's difficult to choose, right? 
three, three hands. Let's see. That gentleman here on the back, I think he was fir first. Why are, are there so many men here? You know, there's 90% male audience. <laughs> What about the argument against uh, central bank digital currencies that it would be danger to commercial banks? I mean, a central bank issued digital currency would mean that individuals could basically have an account at the central bank, which is safer than an account at the commercial bank because that's basically a debt uh, issued, I mean, it, uh, by the commercial bank. So people would actually flee towards central bank digital <laughs> currency in case of a crisis, and this would actually um, and, and make a crisis uh, happen faster. Yeah, well, I think you, 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 you should not expect a rollout of a central bank digital currency um, before a next major crisis will occur. But like I felt we were very close to a ma major financial crisis in 2007 when I published my first book. I feel we're very close to a new financial crisis, world financial crisis again. And actually I have the same, I feel this, I have the same kind of feelings I had 10 years ago just prior to the start of the 2008 crisis. And actually that's why I sold, sold the church, you know, you can sell a church. <laughs> when the rent, uh, interest is low and, and, and everybody feels great and uh, you can't sell it when, when the next crisis happens. And if you look at all kinds of signs of stress in the financial system, look at what's happening in the currency markets where the dollar is gaining and all other currencies are collapsing in Turkey and Venezuela and Iran. And, and it, it's like the tipping point theory, you know, you, you, you won't notice it until there's this tipping point and then there's a big crisis. And I just saw a tweet uh, this morning that uh, house, housing prices are, are the sales of houses in um, Vancouver, uh, Canada, where the, where they have a huge bubble there in real estate, is down 40%. Uh, sales of uh, cars in the US is down. So I think we could have a major crisis uh, within the next two or three years. And when we have this crisis, you will see uh, central banks um, react by using the balance sheet of the IMF to create another round of quantitative easing, like they call it, printing money. After the first crisis in 2008, we used the balance sheet of the national banks <coughs> to flood the world with money, and now they will use the balance sheet of the IMF, which is still a very small balance sheet, and they will do that by creating all these SDRs and, 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 and giving it to, well, maybe even um, the, the retail public. And I, I agree with you that um, by doing this, they will only uh, show the c this is a real, real bad crisis, but they, they will do this because it will be the only way to flood the world again with money, and that's why we need to be prepared and to buy gold, silver, and Bitcoin, because they, um, my investment advice to rich people is always invest in everything the governments can't print. Doesn't matter if it's church, <laughs> or it's a painting, or uh, an old Rolls Royce, or Bitcoin, or, or gold, so um, beware of this. <laughs> So th th thanks, Willem. So, so I have time for two more questions. This gentleman was, uh, was, was first. Thank you very much for your presentation. I'm uh, really curious about uh, knowing your opinion about this new uh, type of digital <coughs> money or digital currency that is backed by uh, gold or silver. So uh, there's a few yeah. projects coming yeah. up, uh, yeah. a company in Canada, a company in Switzerland. Yeah. Uh, so more, what's cheaters. Your <laughs> more cheaters. More cheaters. Okay. <laughs> I, I studied one uh, one <laughs> of these uh, pre-ICOs, <laughs> and first they are going to collect 200 million, <laughs> and with the 200 million they will build the system. Well, great. <laughs> first collect 200 million, then build the system, and it, then it's still not backed by gold. And then we do the ICO, a few billion, and then we're going to back that with gold and silver. You know, is why? would you buy gold and silver on a token when you can buy it in Amsterdam and store it, you know? You're being cheated on, you're being fooled, and you 
being ripped off. You know. it's, it's, uh, and, and that's why this world needs to be regulated, because I've never seen more distrust and more cheating going on than in this uh, wild, wild crypto West. And it's really annoying. And all, everybody <laughs> talking about the new ICO, it's just <laughs> ripping <laughs> you off your money. Well, one of the topics is the collapse of the ICOs, right? Later this evening. Yeah. So I have the one, one last question here, but we have a break after this, uh, these sessions for more questions in the audience. This is a really hot topic. So we're coming back to that. So let's have the last question here. Hello. First of all, it's nice to hear that the central bank is considering to buy itself out of its issues with an ICO. <laughs> it's, um, you said that crypto is a, a niche out of the financial market, which is kind of strange considering it's really uh, an expression of freedom of speech to find consensus on the ordering of transactions also communicated within the private realm. So really this notion of uh, the bankers having anything to say or not about me communicating privately, it doesn't really change whether it's a transaction or whether it's just speech. And um, I think you've asked the public, which is why I'm actually answering, is, um, what, would it, what would happen? And I think we would really be putting the chain into blockchain if we uh, give the government the ability to hold much better records without at all advancing our manner of interfacing with finance. Thank you. Well, <laughs> great, great, great statement. That's libertarian, right? Yeah, yeah great statement. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It will be accepted in a niche of the world's financial system and world's economy. And you can play around there with all of your crypto maximalists. But th they, will, they will change the laws whenever they need to. So thanks, uh, Willem, for your great uh, speech and the, and the, the questions. So.